Hello football fans and welcome to Ram Country here at Tenora High School, the Justin F. Caressel Stadium, home of the Tenora Rams, hosting tonight's high school football contest, week number eight of the regular season. And the Hicksville Aces have made the trip over to, well, just north of Jewel, out here to the Northeastern Local School District for a big matchup in the Green Meadows Conference with the Tenora Rams. Hi everybody, I am Bill Murphy with Hicksville Community Television. Glad to have you here with us. As we are on the road again this week, we were over at the reservation last Friday and uh, the Hicksville Aces uh, had it handed to them by the Fairview Apaches. And unfortunately, it's not gonna get any easier for the Aces here tonight as the Rams are also having a pretty darn good year playing football, especially in the Green Meadows Conference. The Aces are uh, coming into the game tonight uh, just uh, just under 500 with a record of three and four. They're one and two in the Green Meadows Conference. The Rams, uh, they opened their season with a loss to Liberty Center, and we know the Liberty Center Tigers are a pretty darn good football team. They followed that up with a second loss to Wasion, and again, the Indians are usually a pretty good football program as well, and since then, they have done nothing but win football games. They come into tonight's contest with an overall record of five wins, two losses, and they are undefeated in the Green Meadows Conference going into tonight's game. So the Aces are not going to get any easier for them as uh, they will be uh, trying to uh, get themselves back to 500 with a win tonight overall and even off their record at 2-2 two and two in the Green Meadows Conference and hand one of the league's undefeated teams their first loss of the season. None of that's going to be an easy task. It is senior night here at Tenora. They uh, introduce the seniors from all of their uh, fall sports and activities, the band members, cheerleaders, uh, and the cross-country runners, as well as the football players. And uh, so they are, they are stoked. They want to win one for the seniors here tonight. And like I said, and they've been having a pretty darn good year as we get ready for the contest to get started here at Justin Caressel Stadium. A big thank you to uh, the uh, Tenora Rams Athletic Department. Uh, we are located on the other side of the field in the visitor's press box. This facility has a press box on both sides. So we're on the, ram on the uh, Aces side of the field with uh, the uh, coaches up here in the visitor's press box. The Aces are going to be kicking the ball to the Rams to start the contest. So we want to thank them very much for the uh, space. We've got nice preferred parking. Of course, they didn't bring us over any of the pizza and the wings that they had over in the other press box, but that's okay. <laughs> we always enjoy coming over here. Kind of chaotic right now. They, of course, are in the midst of building a new school here at uh, Tenora. It looks like it's going to be an awesome facility when it is done. Kind of excited to be able to come back here in a few years to take a look at the new digs low kick along the ground scooped up and dropped and then picked back up again carry across the field to about the 35 yard line and I think that was Eckert number eight with the carry should have brought my binoculars because the Ram numbers are a little hard to see from our vantage point with the black and the green. We'll do the best we can. They'll get set, they'll work under center for the first rolling out, looking downfield, puts the ball in the air and it is dropped. The intended receiver was a number 29, Christian Comiso. 
I have no idea whether Christian Camaso has any relation to Mason Camaso. I do not know. Again, they'll come up. I believe that uh, it's uh, Schaefer, Nolan Schaefer, number five, playing at quarterback. Strong carry. That's going to be near first down yardage. We'll see where they give him the spot. And I think that's going to be a first down. Yep, they'll move the chains. So they'll pause things briefly while they move the down markers. They get that taken care of. First and 10 for the Rams at their own 45-yard line. Again, their quarterback, Nolan Schaefer, 5'10", 170-pound sophomore. Pitch back. Another strong carry. I think that was DeLarber with the carry. Nope, I'm not, I'm thinking it's not gonna be. Well, anyway. And that should be five against the Rams. As it'll. Get whistled for the false start. So again, Schaefer will come up under center. Quick handoff. Got a hand on him, but he breaks that tackle. And down to the Aces 46 yard line. Another strong carry by DeLarber, the half the halfback. And he'll head over to the sidelines. Schaefer, quick handoff, and they'll stop him diving around. I don't know if the ball was had come loose or they were trying to get it to come loose. That time ball carrier was, uh, I think it was Overly, number 23. And, uh, well, they're going to take a timeout. Okay. So the Rams take a quick timeout, 9.25 to go in our opening quarter. They want to talk things over. So they seem to be doing pretty well offensively, just the one false start that backed them up. But we'll get ready to get back in action. It is fourth down with a yard to go, so... Hence the conversation, I'm sure. Do they want to risk it and try to get the yard, or do they want to punt the ball and see if they can pin the aces deep on into their end of the field? We'll see what they come up with here. Hey, another big thank you we want to pass along is to our football broadcast underwriters, the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships. They are, of course, are the ones that really make it possible for us to be on the road following the Aces at the away games during the football season. So, again, we want to thank them so very much. Well, they're not showing any signs of punting. Looks like the Rams are going to go for it here on fourth and one. Schaefer, quick handoff. And that'll be good enough for first down yardage. So the Rams will move the chains. 
So Tenora advances the ball down to the Aces 43 yard line where it'll be first and 10. Schaefer puts a man in motion and uh, they'll throw the flag again, another false start. As the man in motion caused one of the linemen to move there. So that'll back him up five and make it first and 15 and put him back at the 48 yard line of Hicksville. Keep that clock rolling, 8.52 and counting in quarter number one. Beautiful night for football here. Sun is setting slowly in the west. And it's a little on the cool side, but not cold. Just a nice crisp fall evening. Well, I think it's supposed to be down in the 40s by the time the game is gets wrapped up here tonight. Pitch back. Ball carried by number 23. He's got some running room on the far sideline. He motors down. That's Overly. And Jacob Overly will get him a first down, and he'll carry the ball all the way down. Let's see where they mark it. At about the 33-yard line, it looks like. Schaefer, quick inside handoff, and they upend him and take him down right at the 30-yard line. So he'll pick up a couple, maybe three. And you know, he must have fallen asleep over on the other side. The scoreboard is still saying it's first and 10. <laughs> so, well, he got the yard corrected to 30. There we go, second and six from the 30-yard line. You wake him up over there. Schaefer. Quick handoff. And working our way around the side. Turning the corner and getting out close to the first down marker. And it was Comiso with the carry, number six. And they will indeed give him the first down. Comiso gets him down to the 22-yard line. Schaefer, quick handoff. And that was DeLarber with the carry that time, I believe. Yep, number 22, KP DeLarber. Takes it into the red zone, down to the 17 yard line, second and five. Tenora brings in the play from the sideline. The Rams will break huddle. Schaefer, another quick inside handoff. And they'll pull him down. That time, ball was carried by number 23, Overly. Overly will get him another first down at the 11-yard line. So first and 10 from the 11 for the Rams. They can get another first down if they get down to about the one-yard line. Past the halfway point of this first quarter, under, under six minutes to go. Nolan Schaefer. Again, puts a man in motion, pitches back to him. That's a ball carried by number six, Comiso. Comiso gets down close, but he's not going to make it into the end zone. It looks like he's going to be down around the two or three yard line at the two. Nope, at the three. So it'll be second and two from the three yard line. Aces defense 
needing to toughen up here and hold him. Schaefer, another handoff, and that again is to Comiso, and again he's going to get stopped. We'll see where they mark the ball. And they're going to say he got a yard down to the two, so it'll be third and one from the two-yard line. I'm sure this is four-down territory for the Rams here, so Aces are going to need to stop him a couple more times. 4.15 and the clock rolling. Quarter number one. Pitch out. And touchdown Rams. I think they gave the ball to DeLarber on the pitch back. And he goes into the end zone. And the Rams draw first blood here tonight. 6-0 to Nora with 4.08 to go. Looks like they're going to attempt to kick the extra point. Ball is up and good. So the kick is good and the Rams are up by a touchdown and an extra point, seven to nothing with 4.08 to go here in quarter number one. So the Aces played him tough all the way down the field but couldn't keep him out of the end zone and then we'll get ready to get the ball in their hands for the first time tonight and get the offense out on the field. Of course the Aces Coached by Lucas Smith, head coach uh, for the uh, Tenor Rams, Kenny Krause. So Hicksville out onto the field. Still get ready to get the ball for the first time. Deep men look to be the usual three. Turnbull, Langham, and Camaso. And it'll be a short kick. And the Aces will fall on it at about the 33-yard line. So a low short kick and the Aces get fairly decent field position out of it. It'll be first and 10 Hicksville on their own 33 yard line. So here comes Jake Miller and company for the first time on offense here tonight. And that's gonna be a quarterback keeper. Miller spins, breaks one tackle. And he gets corralled and brought down, but not before he gets all the way down to the Rams 40-yard line. Great misdirection play. Unfortunately, there's a flag on the field back at the original line of scrimmage, which means in all likelihood the big gain is going back as a result of a holding call. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul, moves the ball back to the 24-yard uh, line. And this time it'll be another handoff. Camaso turns the corner. Camaso's turning on the Jets, reverses the field. It's going to be a foot race. Camaso being pursued down the field. They almost get him. He keeps his feet, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Holy smoke, what a run from Mason Comiso. A great handoff. He went over to the far side, eluded a few tackles, broke through, 
and then cut back towards the center of the field. After that, it was a foot race. They dove, almost got him around the ankles, but Camaso kept his balance and scampers into the end zone. That's about a 76-yard touchdown run for Mason Camaso. High snap, kick down, up, and a flag. And they <laughs> really clocked Jake Miller, who was the holder. And they may switch things around because if it is against the Rams and they give him half the distance to the goal line, they might think about going for the two-pointer if they're only a yard out. Right now, seven to six. So now the aces a little bit closer. Going to go for two here. Miller split back on either side of him. Gives it to Camaso. Camaso powering forward. And it looks like he's going to come up just a little bit short. So the two-point conversion fails. Coach Smith out talking with a couple of the officials. So the score is going to remain 7-6 Rams as the Aces get a... Uh, Get a foul called against the Rams and get moved up to one yard out. They attempt the two-point conversion, and they get brought up just a little bit short. Commisso not able to break the plane. But something about that plane, though, that play upset Lucas Smith enough that the coach went out and had a couple words with one of the officials. And so with all that said and done, it will get ready to kick the ball back off to the Rams here. Tunis is going to kick it, and it's going to go out of bounds. So they'll fall. They'll throw the flag about the 25-yard line. And it looks like they'll be putting the ball at the 35-yard line then. And that's where Tenora will get started for this offensive series. Schaefer with a... Ball's loose, and the aces are all over it, but they're saying incomplete pass. Max Grube was the receiver. He was hit immediately as the ball went into his hands. And their ball popped loose. The aces were all over it, but the officials say, you know, incomplete pass. He never had control of the ball. So it'll be second and 10 from the 35-yard line. But good defense from the Aces. As they were able to stop the short pass right in its tracks. Schaefer again under center. Hand off to DeLarber. And he'll be brought down at about the 37-yard line. Now they're going to give him a nice, I'll give him an extra yard there. So we'll make it at the 38-yard line where it'll be third and seven for the Rams. Yep. Hicksville's got to be a little pumped up after that 
touchdown run from Mason Comiso. So hope that carries over to the defense here. Nice to pick up a stop. Dropping back to throw, and he's going to be taken down and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Nolan Schaefer dropped back to throw, couldn't find anybody fast enough, and he'll be uh, taken down back at the 35-yard line. It'll be fourth and 10, and the Rams are most likely going to need to punt it away here. And indeed, that is what they're going to do. So the Aces get the three and out. And will get the ball back here. High snap, but he catches it, puts his foot to it, comes down, and the Aces are just going to let it roll. And he'll down the ball at about the 26, 27-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 Aces from their own 27-yard line after a pretty good punt. Two minutes, 11 seconds to go here in quarter number one. One point game, 7-6 Rams. But the Aces offense out there going out there on the field knowing that they can score on this Rams defense. Snap, Miller, quick hitter, caught. On the sideline still, and some good positive yards. Nice catch by Landon Turnbull. And that'll move the chains. As the Aces pick up a first down on their first play. So first and 10, Hicksville out now at the 38 yard line. Miller, low snap, he handles it, drops back, dumps it over the middle to Comiso. Comiso on the sideline, loads another tackle, and Comiso manages to turn a minimal gain into a hefty gain as he gets across midfield down to the Rams' 49-yard line. He's got a great spin move, and he has been able to utilize that. He shake, shook off the defensive players a couple of times here. So first and 10, Hicksville from the Rams 49-yard line. Comiso the split back beside Miller. Two receivers out on either side. Handoff, Comiso right up the middle. Comiso still on his feet. And they're going to wrestle him down near the 40-yard line. Gain of about eight or nine for Mason. And it's going to be second and two as he'll got, they're going to give him forward progress down to the 41-yard line. Miller going to take his time. Gets a snap. It's another handoff to Comiso. Comiso is going to be, it looks like, about a half a yard shy. We'll see where they mark it. They're going to give him progress to the 40, so it'll be third and one. I thought he went a little farther than that, but I'm not down there on the field. Clearly did not make it to the, the first down marker, so there's no doubt it would have been third down either way. But Miller. Quarterback keeper, Jake gets the first down yardage and a little bit more as he'll take it inside the 35-yard line down to about the 33. Now make it the 34. With under 10 seconds, that's probably going to be the last play of the first quarter. Time will expire, and when we come back after the break, we'll switch ends of the field. It'll be Aces ball, first and 10 at the Rams 34-yard line as Hicksville has been holding their own against the Rams here tonight. 
Well, we've got a little time, so we'll take some time to, again, say a big thank you to the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio, underwriting our football coverage and making it possible for us to be traveling and to go on the road with the Aces for the away games in the regular season, as they always do. We want to thank them so very much, and we want to remind you that if you're in the market for a vehicle, whether you want one that's uh, brand spanking new or pre-owned, be it a car, truck, van, or SUV, Stop by, check out the great selection they have on the lots at the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships, Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick and Jim Schmidt Ford, as well as the Jim Schmidt truck lot. Or don't forget, you can check out the entire dealer inventory online anytime, 24-7 at jimschmidtauto.com. We're so proud to have them as our underwriters, and we want to thank them so very much for their continued support of our Aces Sports broadcast here on Hicksville Community Television, the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio, and online at jimschmidtauto.com. All right, back into business now. 12 minutes on the clock, quarter number two. Miller, low snap, puts it in the air, caught. And carried down inside the 25-yard line. Catch made by Brody Balzer. Balzer, one of the younger players, just a freshman, but he's already kind of made his mark. He's had a couple of really, really good plays here throughout the course of the season and has done a really excellent job. Miller. A fresh set of downs. And not sure exactly what was going on there. Looks like they were having some problem with the exchange of the ball. So put the ball at the 25-yard line. That'll be a loss of about a yard, make it second and 11. And that's going to be Miller hanging on to the ball himself. Jake running downfield inside the 20-yard line. And that'll bring up third down with about four to go. As Miller takes him down to the 18-yard line, puts the aces in the red zone. We, three receivers out on the far side of the field, but he's going to the near side. Caught, and not much there. I don't think that's going to be uh, good enough for a first down. Might have picked up a yard. I think it was Langham made the, or Turnbull rather, made the catch. And that's going to bring up fourth and two. Aces are in four down territory without a doubt. Turnbull again is the lone back out on the near side towards us. Three out wide on the far side, long count. Nobody jumps or bites on the Rams side of the ball. Snap, handoff, and nothing doing. The Ace is going to turn it over on downs. They were looking for that when they were ready for Mason Camaso when he tried to cut through the line and they stop him. Mason maybe got a yard, but he was still well short. So Aces will turn it over on downs. It'll be first and 10 to Nora on the Rams 16 yard line, 921 to go here in our first half. So Nolan Schaefer, working under center, puts a man in motion, and false starts again. It seems to be, uh, I think it's like the third time, he puts, he puts a man in motion, and 
I'm not sure exactly how it how it works out, but evidently every now and then when he does that, it's in just such a way that it causes somebody on the line to to move, whether it's the way he moves his foot to tap his foot to tell the guy to start moving or either way. That's their third false start here tonight. Backs him up. It's now first and 15. They were at the 11-yard line, and looks like they might have got a yard or two. I'm going to give them three. So first and 15 becomes second and 12 as they advance the ball out to the 14-yard line. Bring in some new personnel. Now Rams will break huddle. Clock continues to roll. As this has been a kind of a quick moving first half with not a lot of passing. Another handoff and a good run that time out to about the 25-yard uh, line, which should be Well, let's see. They're going to put it at the 20 five-yard line, so that'll make it third and one. So the Rams able to overcome the penalty, and a couple of strong runs have them looking at a third and short. Still pretty far on their end of the field at the 25-yard line. Schaefer, quick handoff. And that should move the chains as he got to about the 26-yard line. And they're going to say, yep, first down yardage. And I believe that was a Groob, Max Groob, number two, with the carry to get him the yardage they needed. Not by much, but it's a fresh set of downs for the Rams. Dropping back to throw, being pursued, tipped in the air, knocked down. Oh, my goodness. The ball was tipped, and the Rams receiver, which I believe was Overly, still had a chance at it, and then batted down to the ground by a couple more Hicksville defenders to make sure that didn't happen. Make it second and 10, and for one of the very few times tonight, stops the clock after an incomplete pass. We haven't had that happen very often this evening. Schaefer takes the snap. Quick inside handoff, and tackled at about the 30, 31 yard line. Third and six now for Tenora. The Rams will break huddle. Rolling out, and he pitches it back at the last minute. And knocked out of bounds. That was uh, DeLarber with the carry, and KP gets them enough for a first down. As he'll get the ball out to the 38-yard line. As the scoreboard is, like, turning off and on. <laughs> I'm glancing over every now and then. It's completely dark, and then it turns back on, so... Not sure what's going on with that. Schaefer dropping back to throw, puts the ball in the air. He's got a man open. It's caught. And he falls down after the catch, lost his footing a little bit, but not before a huge gain, a nice throw, and a great reception for the Rams. They'll take it down to about the 25 yard line of the Aces. Really, really 
So after the big play, the Rams are just outside of the red zone. Pitch back, and that's DeLarber with the carry, and he gets leveled back at the 25-yard line. No gain. DeLarber caught before he could work up much of a head of steam and just uh, taken down to the deck. All right, here we go. Second and 10. Schaefer spins around, hands it off, and there's going to be a flag thrown in the backfield. So odds are this one's going to be coming back. The ball carried down to about the 15-yard line, but it's going to be against the Rams, so we'll back them up. The flag at the 25-yard line. And that's going to be the spot of the foul, so they'll back him up 10. And that'll make it second and 20 as the ball goes all the way back to the 35-yard line. So the holding call puts the brakes on the Rams' offense at least a little bit. Still 5.05 to go here in quarter number two. A 7-6 game, the Rams trying to do something about that. Hand off, and again, that's DeLarber, and DeLarber gets to about the 31-yard line to bring third and long up, third and 16. Again, most likely four-down territory here for the Rams, but still, you got to like the Aces' chances of putting a stop on them with a third and 16 than with a third and six, so... Schaefer went over to the sideline to check in and bring in the play. He'll come running back out. The Rams break huddle, and here we go. Third and 16, ball at the 31-yard line. Nolan Schaefer up under center. Schaefer hands it off to DeLarber again, and he'll be brought up well short. And uh, DeLarber looks like he might have got back to about the original line of scrimmage. They're going to mark him down at the 25, where it'll be fourth and 10. So the Rams need to get to the 15 yard line to move the chains. Again, Schaefer over at the sideline getting the call from Coach Kenny Krause. Schaefer sets the offense. Puts a man in motion, and again, as soon as he does it, the the the, the one fella at the end of the line, as soon as, as soon as that guy runs behind him, he moves. And that's the fourth time. Fourth time that they get called for the false start. So the fourth and ten becomes fourth and fifteen. So here we go, the Rams with a long fourth down. Drops back, gonna put, put it in the air. He escapes one, launches it, I, and I think he caught it. And it's a touchdown. Holy cow. Running for his life in the backfield, Schaefer launches the ball. I don't see, I couldn't see the number of the receiver from this far away, so I apologize for that. But the young man not only made the grab, but fell into the end zone, stayed in bounds, had at least one foot in bounds, and scores the touchdown to make it 13 to 6. Javin Gaines, number 67, is the kicker. The holder, number five, Nolan Schaefer, the quarterback. 
Snaps down, kick is up, looks good. And it is. So Gaines splits the uprights for the second time tonight and makes it 14-6 Rams with 2.57 left to go in our opening half. Talk about pulling out all the stops and making the big play when you needed to. The Rams certainly did it that time. As they launch that strike on a fourth and 15 to put themselves into the end zone and increase their lead to eight points. So the Aces will try to regroup here. They're gonna get the ball back. They're gonna have about, uh, about two minutes and 50 seconds in all likelihood to work with. So they'll be able to have, they've got their timeouts too. Aces have all three timeouts, so Plenty of time with the timeouts to be able to put together a good offensive drive. So the Rams will tee it up at the 40 yard line. And they'll stop that one. They blew the whistle before anything happened here. And there's gonna be a foul. And it's gonna be, I guess the indication is delay of game. They took too long. So, yep, against the, uh, against the Rams, took a little too long getting themselves set up and ready to kick the football. Because I think that was, we're on the visitor's side of the field, so the referees turn their backs to us when they indicate what the infraction was. So sometimes it's easy to tell what it is, and sometimes you kind of have to guess. I think that was delay a game. It was either that or it had to be some kind of an illegal formation or something. So they'll back it up to the 35 yard line. And put the foot into it. It'll come down and it's caught. Working his way through traffic out to about the 46, 47 yard line. So a good return for the Aces. They're going to say his knee touched at the 45, so that's where Hicksville will take over first and 10. 2.51 left in the half. The Aces have all three of their timeouts to utilize if necessary. The Rams still have two timeouts that they can use as well. So the Aces come out onto the field. Jake Miller looks over his personnel. And gets set in the shotgun. Here we go. Snap. Quick. Jake looking downfield. He's in trouble. Scrambling. Evades one, not the other, though. And he's going to be dropped for a loss back at the 39-yard line. Just nothing down the field for Miller to work with. And Jake winds up having to take the sack and put the aces back at the 39-yard, where it'll be second and 16. Clock continues to roll. So Miller now facing a second and long. He's going to hang on to the ball, and he's going to get sacked again. And he's going to lose a few more yards, and that's going to make it third. Now they're going to move the ball back to the 35-yard line. That's going to make it third and about 20. So the Aces moving in the wrong direction here. So third and 20, split backs on either side of Jake Miller. Comiso goes in motion, quick, no, nope. And they sniff that out, the ball pops loose, but they're gonna say down by contact, and there was just nothing doing on any of those offensive plays. The Aces just were not able to make anything happen, and they're gonna have to punt it back to the Rams, and the Rams are gonna have well, let's see, they can run the clock down as far as, as far as they possibly can here. 
But the Rams are still going to have a little time if they want to try to make something happen. So Tunis, I think they're going to probably wait until they get down to just about a second left on the play clock and call timeout. So everybody on the field just sort of standing there waiting. And then the Aces will call the timeout just before the play clock expires. Should mention here at, at uh, Justin Carrasco Stadium, they actually have a game. A, they also have actually have a play clock, but it is not working tonight. It just shows the 25 seconds, and it does not move. So, so the on-field play clock is not functioning here tonight. But they'll take it down to just a second to go and call the timeout. So burn off as much time as possible before they punt the ball back to the Rams. So Tenora is going to get the ball back, and they're going to have maybe a half a minute, 35 seconds to work with when they do. So the Aces will come out, make break huddle. Travian Tunis, the punter, will drop back to kick the ball away. Rams will put their deep men back. Here's the snap. Tunis puts his leg into it. It's going to take a good roll. And the Aces are going to down it at about the 31-yard line. 31 seconds left in the half. And the Rams will get it back. And it'll be at their 30, I'm, I was, I'm, I apologize, 34-yard line. So first and 10, Tenora at their own 34-yard line with 31 seconds to work with and two timeouts. We'll go to halftime. As I said, we're on the other side of the field than normally, so we won't be bringing you the halftime show because they'll be, the bands will be facing in the other direction and you won't be able to see or hear them properly. So quick handoff. Still on his feet. And that was, I believe, uh, number 23. That's uh, Jake Overly with the carry. Gets him a first down out to the 46-yard line. Stays in bounds. And clock keeps rolling down to 10 seconds now. See if they get one more playoff. They do. Quick handoff. And still on his feet. And that'll be almost a first down, but I don't think it's going to matter because time expires. And that's the end of the first half of football here tonight. So we've played 24 minutes of varsity football action here at Justin Caressel Stadium on the campus of Tenora High School. And at halftime, it's the homestanding Rams leading the Aces here on senior night. 14 to 6, the halftime score. We're going to take a break, but we invite you to stay tuned. Brian and I will be back, and we will have all of the exciting second half play by play coming your way right here on Hicks TV. Uh -huh. 